Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Plymouth Congregational Church on this Christmas Eve. First and foremost, Merry Christmas to everybody. This is our traditional service of lessons and carols, a service which we end in candlelight, passing the light of Christ to each other. We invite you at home to get your candles ready and be prepared to dim your lights as we get near the end of the service. What an evening this is, celebrating the, the birth of, of Jesus Christ. We invite everybody to worship the Lord with us. We invite you into the sanctuary. in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. For to us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Let us adore him, Christ the Lord. In the glow of the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, we light the Christ child candle.
God of grace, we rejoice in your presence in our lives. In our infant Redeemer, you offer love to the least and the lost. As we worship on this sacred night, shine your light upon us. Let your hope fill our hearts, your peace rule in our minds, your joy fill our souls, and your love pour forth in our lives and into your world. On this holy night, we celebrate the birth of your beloved Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Greetings again. Of the many things that we've missed in this year of 2020, one thing I think rises above all others, and it's the most basic thing of all, being with each other being together, not so worried about our hugs and whether we're too close, not so worried about when we shake hands, whether there's a Purell bottle close at hand, or especially with older and younger folks together, sometimes feeling the need to have a window pane between us. Physical togetherness, of course, it matters in life. We crave it and we need it. And that is very much at the center of what we celebrate this night. We celebrate the fact that God feels exactly the same way we do about human contact. We're here tonight because God chose. God chose to be with us in person. Tonight we lift up the birth of the one we call Emmanuel, which means God with us. And we celebrate what is known as the Incarnation, when God walked among us. Although, of course, the baby Jesus crawled first. The magnitude of this miracle is beyond what logical minds can fully grasp, which is why we need to grasp this first in our hearts which is also why the Bible tells the story the way it does. It reaches for our hearts. And so in this traditional service of, of lessons and carols, with readings, many of which we know and know well, and Christmas carols, many of which we know and know well, in this service, we, the pastors, we pastors, we step back so that the scripture and the music can tell the story in its own way, reaching for our hearts. Now, of course, in this most unusual of years, we're doing a lot of things differently. Usually in this service, you're sitting shoulder to shoulder. Sometimes I've noticed even holding hands, and eagerly, all of us eagerly awaiting the moment when we can receive the light from the Christ candle and pass it along to one another with the light of that Christ candle illuminating each of our faces. We will do that tonight in a different way, symbolically, though, passing the light to you at home. But even though this is different than usual, just as so many other parts of our lives are different than usual, and in many ways harder than usual, please remember that the whole point of Emmanuel, God with us, is that we can get through things no matter what they are because God is with us. 
friends, even though we are having to do things in different ways, it is still very much Christmas Eve. And there is, we don't have to worry, there is no Grinch who could ever steal Christmas. Christ the Lord was indeed born 2,000 years ago. And because of that, we invite you, one and all, to sit back and allow the light of Christ to come into your hearts, to come into your hearts in a new way this, eve, this Christmas Eve. Amen. Good evening. It's my honor to read the first lesson of the evening. It is Genesis 1, 1 through 5, and John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that light was good, and God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Now, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through Him. And without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Singing glory to the newborn king. Tell the news to every nation. Celebrate what God has done. Miracles are just beginning. Glory to the king. Glory to the king. Glory to the newborn king. Shepherds, listen to the call. Bringing glory to the newborn king. Lift your voices, one and all, singing glory to the newborn king. All the world as one rejoices, lifting carols of joy and praise. Fill the earth with joyful noises. Glory to the king, glory to the king, glory to the newborn king. lesson from the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 6 through 7 the prophet Isaiah foretells the coming of Christ the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light 
those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Third lesson, Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 4 and 6 through 9. The prophet Isaiah foretells the peace that Christ will bring. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The fourth lesson, Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 35, 38. The angel Gabriel visits Mary and foretells the birth of Jesus. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found your favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high and the Lord will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Fifth lesson, the gospel according to Luke. St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out from the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she would be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sixth lesson, Luke 2, 8 through 16. The angel brings good news to the shepherds. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock 
by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward all people. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now, even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe lying in the manger. The word of the, word. the, word of the Lord, thanks be to God.
the seventh lesson, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. The wise men are led by the star to Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child, with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lesson, Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 5a. The prophet in exile foresees the coming of the glory of the Lord. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nation shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your son shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God.
Jesus. Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus. Jesus. So holy, meek and mild. New life. pray. God of hope, on this most holy night, from near and far, in unfamiliar yet sacred ways, we gather in your most holy name, in word and prayer, song and silence. May this time together be a blessing to each of us and our heartfelt gift to you. Everlasting Lord, long ago in Royal David's city, you came to set the captives free, to scatter the proud and lift up the lowly. You came to us in the vulnerability of an infant, walking with the same tentative, painful, yet loving steps that we walk. Tonight, we celebrate the mystery of the incarnation that you are Emmanuel, God with us. Tonight, we ask a measure of comfort that because you are with us in Christ, no matter how much physical distance there is between us and the people we love, we are one with another. Spirit of light and life, Mary and Joseph trusted your steadfast promises. Angels sang out. Shepherds heard the good tidings. Wise men saw the light of your star and followed it. May their faith, courage, and persistence inspire and encourage us in our daily living. Good shepherd, we are like sheep. You invite us to walk with you, to learn from you, and to love you. May we choose to do so, sure in the knowledge 
that when we stray from you, when we fall exhausted, and loving God, so many of your children are falling exhausted, you run to us, you embrace us, you lift us up, hold us in your arms and renew us. Holy Savior, the very joy of festivals like this night can be hard. This year, words break at the disorientation we feel. There is longing and loneliness, joyful anticipation, frustration, disappointment in traditions that must wait for another day, and sacred imagination in finding new ways to celebrate Christmas. We all have wounds, and you know what that is like. Keep us mindful that the child whose birth we celebrate came to us for our healing and for our salvation. In our disorientation, may we look up and see the star that shone upon a stable, your light, guiding us to the exhausted young couple, the messy stable, where you revealed the simple truth of your glorious love for us. Let us receive your precious gift, the one we need so very much this night, that nothing in all creation, not our disorientation, not distance, not even death, nothing can separate us from your steadfast love. We pray, trusting that you hear all who turn to you and you receive our gratitude for the blessings in our lives. May those who need your strength and steadfast care be comforted. We pray for Kim and Tammy, Drew, Laura, David, all who are grieving, those who work and serve in places of danger, our brothers and sisters who are not free to worship. Lord, we pray for all your little ones, especially for John and Sherilyn and their little boy in the NICU. Pray for Barbara and Evie. Loving God, we spend our days in a whirlpool of words. Too few of them are gracious. This night we come to the stable to marvel that your word became flesh and dwells with us. In a moment of peace, still our tongues, quiet our minds. Hearken to the whispers of our hearts and illumine our souls. Lord of unexpected blessing, with humble, hopeful hearts, we ask that you grant us peace, fill us with your grace, and send us forth with courage, bearing your gifts of mercy and hope into our world that is so desperately in need of them. Glory to you. Glory in ex Chelsea's Deo. Glory in the highest. Amen. We just heard a oh, little town of Bethlehem and in that line 
the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee this night. Dealing with fears is part, a big part of what churches are called to do, to help the world and, 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 and all of us with our fears, but also to do it by spreading hope, hopes and fears of all the years. And I've stepped outside because that's the work we do out in the world. This is where churches are called to make a difference. And so this evening, we ask for your generosity in helping the church, helping this church, helping Plymouth with our many ministries that seek to do just that, spread hope and deal with our fears. Let us give back as best we can. Let us do so with joy in our hearts. Danger. 
we reached a very special part of the service where we light our candles and in years past we would be looking out at all of your faces the musicians and I, Pastor Al, have a beautiful view um, we hope you have your candle ready and if you don't there is some time for you to do so uh, we will take the light from the Christ candle right in the center of the Advent wreath we will share that with one another Pastor Al and I will share that with one another and then we will share that with you and I hope you're able to light candles at home and enjoy Silent Night by the light of candles
every year. It is one of the great privileges, one of the great moments for us as pastors to stand here and to look out at all of you with the Christ candle lighting your faces, reminding us that each of us are children of God, every one of us. Our wish, our wish for each of you and for all of us and truthfully for the whole world is that, that the light of God, that this light would shine on you, that Christ would make a difference in your lives in the coming year, that 2021 would be a new and a fresh start. And we end this service the way we always end it, thinking of the Prince of Peace. We bring the oldest, the ancient benediction, the oldest benediction in the Bible. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen and Merry Christmas.